In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to create a camera that displays parts of a map relative to the motions of a player. Cameras are a fundamental part of today's game development, and I hope that this guide about a camera for a simple 2D platformer gives you some insight on how cameras can be created for modern games. So before we begin, let me give you some background on our current game. We have a 2D platformer here where we're able to move horizontally and vertically by jumping and we have gravity to allow us to fall. Collision detection is implemented so the player is capable of jumping off platforms and if they fall and hit a platform they'll stay on that platform without going below it. Our window has a size of 1280 by 720 which means that our window covers an area of around 921,600 pixels. But what we see on our screen is only a fraction of the content that we actually want to display on our window. So now let's look at the actual map that we want to use for this level. The map has an image size of 1920 by 1120 pixels which is far larger than our window size. The entire area of the map is around 2,150,400 pixels. So if we want to use this map for our game, we have to either adjust our window size to make it much larger, or we have to implement some type of camera that focuses on the player while scrolling the map. Now that you have an idea of what our project goal is and what our map looks like, let's briefly go over the starter code I'm going to be using in this video. I'm essentially using the same code that I've been using in my previous videos, so if you've seen those you should have a general idea of what the code looks like. But just to quickly recap, we have our launcher in main.py which creates an instance of our screen class. The launcher class inherits from the game class found in game.py which we basically use to initialize Pygame and handle our events. The launcher class manages the settings of our game like the window size, our asset directories, and the title of our window. The screen class in screen.py manages what is displayed on the screen and we use this to update our sprites and potentially handle key presses. We use a tmx file to create our map by using a file generated from tiled and we import the map through the map class found in map.py. Once we've loaded our map from tiled we create new sprites using this map data and all of the sprites that we create are found in sprites.py. The collision detection for our player is also handled in screen.py. Now, going to sprites.py, we have classes for the player, melee enemies, and obstacles. In this file, we call classes found in base sprite.py and spritesheet.py, and if you've seen my previous video on spritesheet animations, you'll recognize that these two files contain classes for handling spritesheet animations. Lastly, we have the file constants.py, which holds constants used for the screen, physics, colors, sprites, etc. Now that we've gone over the starter code and understand the need for a camera in our 2D platformer, Let's consider how we can actually implement this functionality into our game. What we're essentially doing is scrolling through the contents of our map, so as our player moves to the right, everything else on our map appears to move to the left. The player always should stay in the center of our game window. To better understand this picture, imagine the camera is a rectangle that is positioned around the player and has the same dimensions as the game window. I have a simulation prepared here where the entire map is shown on our window, and the camera is represented by this green rectangle. The camera is intended to be affixed to the player, so when the player moves, the camera will also move, and we've designed it such that the player is always at the center of this window. Notice the values for the draw offset and the player position on the bottom of this rectangle. As we move our player's position to the right, the draw offset decreases. We want to shift the rest of the contents to the left, and that's what this draw offset represents. We can see this in full effect if we zoom into this green rectangle. If you just focus on the player, it looks like he's not moving, but if you look at the entire window, it looks like he's traversing through the map. To start implementing the camera, go to the bottom of map.py and create a class called camera. In the constructor for this class, we'll specify parameters for the game, width, and height. We'll store the game width and height parameters as fields in our class. Then we'll create a field for the camera, which will be a pie game rectangle originating at the origin, which is the point 00, with the width and height given by the parameter values. We expect the width and height values to be the size of the map the player is using, so we would expect it to hold values for 1920 and 1080. The game parameter is what's used to identify the screen's width and height. Now let's focus on the movement of the camera. The camera is intended to move in relation to a target, in this case the player. So we'll create a method called update with a parameter for the target. First, let's consider the horizontal shift. We want our camera to be positioned centrally around our player, so first consider the center point of our game window. We can access this value by taking the width from our game field and dividing it by 2. Next, we consider the sprite. For simplicity, assume the sprite is simply a point where its position is given by the center x value. So we need to access the target's rect attribute and retrieve the center x position from it. 
what we are trying to do is calculate the new x position for the rectangle. So we can define a variable x and take the difference between half the screen's width and the center x position of our target. This makes it so that the left side of our camera rectangle starts half a screen width from the location of the target, making the target centered horizontally on our screen. To center our camera vertically, we follow a similar process to what we did in the x-axis. For this, we consider half of the game window's height and the position of our target in the y-axis. You might be thinking that we should just consider the target to be a point and use the center y position like we did for the x-axis. However, this is actually problematic. If our target was a static sprite with no animations, we wouldn't have this problem. But since our sprite changes when idly standing or walking, the width and height of the sprite is also changing. If the width and height are changing, the center point of the sprite is changing. This represents a big problem for our simple assumption of making the target a point in space. So what do we do now? Well, although our center y position is constantly moving up and down, we do have a y coordinate that is staying constant. As I mentioned earlier, our player is a sprite that experiences gravity and collides with platforms. So when we're colliding with the platform, the player's feet are always touching the top of a platform if they are not falling or jumping. So in other words, even though our sprite is animating and changing height, the bottom of the sprite is not changing, the position is fixed to the top of the platform. So aside from the screen height, the next consideration we should take into account is the bottom of our target, which is given by the bottom field of the target's rect attribute. We can now define a new variable y and set it to be the difference of our screen's height and the bottom of the target sprite. At the very end, we can reassign our camera field to be a new pie game rect originating from these values that we just calculated. To use this camera object that we have defined, let's go to screen.py and in our new method for this screen class, we can create an instance of our camera. We can pass in the game instance, the map's width, and the map's height as arguments for the constructor. Now let's add in the update method. Inside the update method of the screen class, call the camera's update method after all the sprites are updated. Pass in the player as the argument to this method. After we've added our camera's update method, the only thing left to do is to adjust the way we draw our sprites to correspond to the camera's position. The update method moves the camera to match the player's position, but we also need to make it so that only sprites in the camera's view are displayed on our screen. So we basically need to do two things. First, we need to move each sprite so that it moves by an offset given by the top and left portions of the camera rectangle, and we use the camera's top left field to do this. So if we move right, the sprite will move left the distance given by the camera's top left position and itself. If we move left, the sprite will move right the distance given by the camera's top left position and itself. Next, we just need to update the way we draw sprites so that instead of just displaying all our sprites using self.allsprite.draw, we instead blit our sprites to the screen and then position them using the procedure given in part A. So first in our camera class in map.py, we'll create a new method called apply. This method should accept one parameter called entity, and we basically want this apply method to return a new rectangle that is shifted according to the position of the camera. So we'll return the value of calling entity.rect.move and we'll pass in the argument self.camera.topleft. Then we create one more method in the camera class called draw. This method should have parameters for the surface and the sprite group to draw. In this method, all we have to do is iterate through each sprite in the group and then blit each sprite's image using the result of the apply method to adjust its position. That completes our camera class. So now all that we have left to do is to incorporate this into screen.py. So in our display method, first we'll change the way we're blitting the map rect by calling self.camera.apply and passing in the map as the argument. Then instead of drawing all the sprites, we want to call our camera's draw method and we'll pass in the game's surface and all our sprites into this method. And you can see over here, the self.map is basically what we created when we were loading our tiled map from the assets directory. If we run the game with the current code, we can see that the camera follows the player, and the camera is placed such that the player is exactly at the middle of the screen. However, look at the problems this current design is causing. When the player moves too far to the left, the camera overextends beyond the left boundary of the map, and nothingness is displayed in this region. Worse, if we move towards the right and then go back to the left, this nothingness is replaced by a distorted image of our border walls. This is due to the fact that we have not assigned anything to be drawn in this region. So when we shift all of our sprite groups back as our player is moving, they just kind of stay there when we retrace our steps. 
This problem occurs on all sides of our Pi game rectangle, so it's actually a big problem that we need to go about fixing. First, let's consider implementing a horizontal boundary. To bound the camera to the map, we have to consider the process for choosing the X and Y coordinates of the camera rectangle. First, consider the constraint of not allowing the camera to go past the left side of the map. In Pi game, the top left corner represents the origin or point 00. To prevent passing this point in the X direction, we should take the minimum of 0 and the shift we applied to center the target horizontally. Recall that the shift value was basically obtained by taking half of the screen's width and subtracting the center of our sprite from this value. By taking the minimum of 0 and this value, we basically ensure that if our shift goes beyond the left hand side of the screen, we restrict our camera so that the X coordinate stays at 0. Next, consider how we can bound the camera so that it doesn't pass the right hand side of the screen. To do this, we apply a new shift which takes the width of our window and subtracts it from the camera's width. Then we take the maximum between this shift and the previous shift we calculated. This way, the camera's X position becomes capped to prevent the camera from starting in an X position that could cause it to go over the width of the screen. Adding this code should fix the horizontal bounds present in our camera, but we still need to consider the vertical bounds. We start by bounding the top of the camera rectangle first. The top left of the screen represents the point 0, 0, so our process for the top is very similar to the process for the left. To prevent passing this point in the Y direction, we take the minimum of 0 and the shift applied vertically. Then, to prevent our camera from going below the bottom border, we apply a shift to remove the camera's height from the window height. We have to take the maximum between this shift and the previous shift to prevent the camera from going beyond the bottom map border. If we run the game now, we see that our boundary problem has been completely solved, and we're able to move without going past the map's boundaries. So that concludes this video guys, if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment down below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.